Hey there, lovely people. This is Sean, and I'm not at the lovely place at the moment, as you can tell. It's not so lovely. But every once in a while, I uh, order a new tool, or I go purchase a new tool, and I might not be using it down there real soon, but I'm obviously purchasing it for use down there. Uh, but I am using it here at my house today, and I wanted to show you a couple of things that I just got. One of those is the Tough Built C700 Sawhorse job site table and as you can see it will make a table uh, I'll show you a little bit about how this thing uh, works and how awesome it is I'm I'm excited I wish I had bought this when it first came out I don't know how long these have been out but I just came across them got the paperwork I'm gonna kind of tell you what all these little gadgets are for and then we're gonna use another tool that I just bought that we're gonna be needing when we put together any additional pole barns or outbuildings that require metal cutting metal so stay tuned for that and we'll show you everything we got. All right, the first thing I wanna do is show you how this thing opens. Uh, it's pretty simple, but you do have to follow a few little instructions. So if you notice over here on this side, it says close first, right there. There's a button here. Over here, it says open first. So holding the handle, you squeeze the button and it pops this one open. Then you can squeeze this button on this side the one that says close first and it it will open that now set it down spread these legs apart click it into place do the same thing on the other side spread the legs open click it down into place now here's the important part as well holding holding the handle you simply drop this lever down and let that go as far down as you want it to go. It's adjustable. I go the full length and then lock that into place. Do the same thing on the other side. And then the other two legs. Now, when you're closing this thing up, you do all of this in reverse. So before we do it in reverse and we close it up, I wanna show you something that's extremely important that you could easily destroy your brand new tough built sawhorse c700 if you're not careful if you don't know better so when you close this don't don't do this first don't pull this up and close it if your legs are extended the first thing you must do or you should do is grab that pull it down and then raise that up and lock it into place if you try to close this first and bring these legs together and then do that it's not going to release and you'll find yourself tearing this tearing this lever up pushing too hard because you're like it's not releasing and you could bend it and really mess it up so always bring these up prior uh, oh check it out so I started to do that right now this thing popped open and it wouldn't allow me to do it so it, it, it made me need to push hard on this always make sure these are clicked into place before you do that and bring it up you'll destroy it if you don't same thing goes on this side as well click pull, click click pull, click bring it in and then when you close it it says close first on this side these feet have to be in the right position then you do this side the same way and when you get used to it I'm sure it'll be a little easier this is brand new to me all right so let's open her back up Okay, first thing I want to show you are these cutting supports on this side right here. These raise up and pop down, and here's what you can do. You can throw a 2 by 4 right there. Uh, we need a longer one to make it look like it's going to do something. That way it's actually long enough to cut. So you'd slide it down to one side. And you can just simply cut it off right here, hacksaw it, saw it, 
whatever you want to do to get the piece off. So you've got a support here, and it says that it holds up to, I believe, 80 pounds. Right down here, let's bring it back a little bit. Right down here you see supports, and uh, let's see what they call these exactly. These are the material supports. Fold out the material support pegs to hold materials for cutting and storage. So a piece of plywood can go right there. So you pop this one out, pop this one out, grab your piece of plywood, and there you are. So by far the coolest thing about these saw horses is the ability to turn them into a work table. You release this lever, pull this out. You can fit a four by four post right here, or two by four. Do the same on this end, over here, and over here. Let's just throw some two by fours in here. Locked it into place. Locked it into place. This will hold it steady. Now, if you want more surface area, you can raise the two by fours up to be at their normal height. And they're going to be flush with the top of the saw horse. This makes for a great table surface. Check this out. Another great thing about these saw horses that I thought was a very valuable little tool, right here, you may notice, there are two holes here, two holes here. The purpose of that, you have that on both saw horses, of course, is that you could take a two by four, you could set it on here, and you could screw it underneath from those from the bottom side to screw this down on here and hold it into place and there so that you get a raised surface above your cutting area so that you're not cutting into the sawhorse. When I am considering, you know, if I want to buy something or invest in it, I like seeing, you know, as much as I can. So I wanted to show you these instructions. So I'll let you pause it here and zoom in as needed. Next, I want to give you an up and close personal view of this sawhorse as i mentioned two by fours or four by fours in that little adjustable very heavy duty bracket there this is the part that you open up to release it and lock it and then here is the weight capability 1300 pounds each on these particular c700 sawhorses And on the top surface of these saw horses is a skid resistant, almost like a saw uh, a sandpaper uh, surface so that things won't slide around easily. And then you have this nice easy carrying handle. Always be careful not to ever cut through that or cut into this. And that's why these little screw holes are so nice to have on here so you can raise it if you're going to be consider if, if you're possibly going to be careless that's a good way to prevent problems all right so now that we've learned a little bit about these saw horses let's go ahead and put them to some use
Okay, this is what I just got. This, I had to tear the sticker off so we could see this, but it says, make your drill a power shear immediately. So we're gonna see if that works for cutting metal. Uh, watched a couple of videos on this little gadget and it looks like it does the job on this thickness of metal and through those curves that you have on like metal roofing and metal siding for, for pole barns. So let's give it a go. My first cut. Let's see how bad I did. So, as you saw, I started on that side. I got partially through and I cut off a section. Did the same thing over here. There's my line. I'm wiggling a little bit. I think with some practice I'll get good at this and I'll figure out how to go about 
you know, making sure that I'm not zigzagging all over the place. I believe we can make it work. I mean, it was not very expensive, so uh, I think it might be worth the money. that one cut much better much 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 better much cleaner I, I learned that you just have to bend really hard to go uphill especially when you're coming back up just bend that drill down there and make it work It is all get out. You ever heard the phrase crooked as a dog's hind leg? There it is. That's where it came from.
garbage, but it's cut in half. I can think of about four other tools that would have done a better job than that. Of course, a lot of it has to do with the way that I laid it on this table with weight on each side, pulling it apart. I'm sure bind that bind it up and did not help it a bit. Okay, well, there you have it, lovely people. This tool will cut, but it's really much better, first of all, if you brace your metal right on your table so that you're not bound in any way. But secondly, that wasn't the whole cause of this. Those dips, those valleys, those little hills, those ridges in the metal, this will get bound up in there as you're as you're trying to curve it up and push it down and bring it up and down here's what the uh, two nibblers look like but uh i think it works great for a flat piece of metal i mean you can tear through it and you can stay pretty straight but uh, as you can see i was kind of winding in some spots luckily the project that i tested this on is a uh not an important one that it looks perfect or is perfect so i just thought this might be of a benefit to you to uh, learn a little bit about but uh, i want to thank you for joining us me today here not at the lovely place and if you don't know what the lovely place is you know that's a homestead that we're creating that we've created we're working on we're working towards self-sufficiency complete off the grid so if you want to go there and see all kinds of stuff related to tractors and pole barns and driveways and bulldozers and jackhammers on mini excavators all the fun stuff more fun than this go over to the lovely place subscribe to our channel like this if, if, if you thought this was valuable to you if not it was just nice spending some time with you and i hope you have a great one. talk to you soon thanks